Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer software testing interview question 86. That is, what is software testing life cycle? Let me answer. Software testing life cycle, in short, is known as STLC. And this STLC is nothing but sequence of phases. Okay? STLC is nothing but sequence of phases followed while testing the software from start to end. I'll show you a diagram here. Okay, from this you can understand this line. What is STLC? STLC is nothing but a sequence of phases. You see there are five phases here, in different colors. Requirement analysis is one phase, test planning is another phase, test designing is another phase, test execution is another phase, and test closure is the last phase, okay? So one after the another, the phases are coming. Sequence of phases. First phase is requirement analysis, then test planning. Like that, it is a sequence of phases, which are followed while testing the software. When this uh, sequence of phases are followed, while testing the software, the testing team will follow the sequence of phases from start to end of the project, okay? While testing the software, the testing team will follow the sequence of phases from start to end, okay? So these are the different phases we have. So as you can see in this diagram, that is requirement analysis, test planning, test designing, test execution, and test closure are the five phases of the STLC. You see the same thing are mentioned here. These are the different phases of STLC. That is requirement analysis, test planning, test designing, test execution, test closure. Coming to the first phase, that is requirement uh, analysis phase, okay? So entry criteria, every each and every phase will have an entry criteria and exit criteria, and during this phase, we'll perform something, okay? So what is entry criteria? What is exit criteria? For each and every phase in this STLC, there is an entry criteria and exit criteria. So what is the entry criteria? What is exit criteria? We'll discuss, okay? So to start this phase, to start this phase, we need to satisfy this entry criteria, okay? Only when this entry criteria is met, then only we can start this phase, okay? As part of software testing, while testing the software, if you want to perform requirement analysis phase, when to start this requirement analysis phase? When this entry criteria is met. And when to stop this requirement analysis and move to the next phase? When we match this and exit criteria, okay? So to stop this uh, phase and go to the next phase, okay? From requirement analysis, if you want to go to the test planning phase, you have to you have to match with exit criteria, okay? You have to add to the exit criteria. When exit criteria is matched, then only we can move to the next phase like that. So to enter, to exit, these are the criteria. So what is the entry criteria for the requirement analysis and what is exit criteria for the requirement analysis? Let me show you. So for requirement analysis, the entry criteria is the requirements itself, okay? Uh, without the client giving you the requirements, how can you start testing, right? So we have to perform requirement analysis first, okay? So any project when it starts, right, uh, the development team and testing team has to understand and go through the requirements, especially testing team to perform the testing, guys. They have to understand the requirements, right? So then only they can start the testing. So the first phase in STLC will be requirement analysis phase where when can we start the requirement analysis phase? When, when can the software testers can start this requirement analysis phase? When the requirements are provided in the form of some BRS document, et cetera, okay? In different forms, uh, the client team will be sharing the requirements, okay? The software testers will be receiving the requirements of the uh, software that has to be tested in different ways. So most of the cases, it will be like BRS document, okay? Business requirement specification document. So when the client gives you this BRS document, then that is the entry criteria to start the requirement analysis phase, okay? So let's assume that the BRS document has been given by the client and entry criteria for the requirement analysis uh, phase is met and uh, we have started performing the requirement analysis that software testing team has uh, started uh, uh, performing the requirement analysis. So what will be the actions performed by the testing team as part of this requirement analysis phase? So in this requirement analysis phase, the testing team will go through this BRS document. All the requirements that are mentioned in this BRS document or in the given requirements that the testing team will go through understand those requirements, okay? And also, if uh, some of the requirements are not understood by the testing team, they will clarify the doubts with the client team, okay? So they have to clarify with the business team or the client team. That's what the testing team will do. They will simply go through all the requirements given by the client one by one and understand them. And if they have not understood anything, they will clarify the doubts. That's the first step. And while, while doing this process, where uh, going through the requirements, understanding and clarifying the doubts, the testing team will derive the testable requirements, okay? Not all requirements uh, will be 
related to the testing purpose okay some some requirements will be for development team and all those stuff okay the architectures and all will be there which uh, testing team doesn't need right they don't have to understand the development team will understand that but ultimately in that brs document or in the given requirements right whatever the requirements that a testing team can use for testing purpose that testable requirements will be derived and uh, documented in a separate document okay if required the testing team will go through the requirements uh, understand them clarify the doubts and finally they will come up with a list of a checklist of testable requirements that can use that they can use for performing the test okay so they will document this uh, checklist of requirements in a separate document if required so these are the two activities that the testing team will perform during the requirement analysis phase guys so so when when the testing team will exit this requirement analysis phase when this exit criteria is met then testing team will exit this requirement analysis phase okay when we can say that requirement analysis can be exited when this exit criteria of the requirement analysis can be met when all the testable requirements are derived okay all the requirements are understood by the testing team and they have all the doubts has been clarified for all the requirements that are mentioned in the brs document all the doubts about the requirements are clarified and the testing team has understood all the requirements and uh, the testing has team has derived the up on the top of this understanding the testing team has derived the testable requirements okay they derived the testable requirements from this brs document or set of requirements given so once the testing team is ready with the, all the testable requirements okay that are derived from this brs document so that is uh, that is nothing but the exit criteria is met okay so there the testing team can exit the requirement analysis phase when they are ready with the testable requirements derived from the given requirements documents or requirements so this is the first phase so so what is the second phase we have after requirement analysis once all the testable requirements are derived from the requirements given by the client then the testing team has to start the next phase that is test planning phase this test planning phase is also having the exit criteria entry criteria exit criteria and there will be some actions performed activities performed by the testing team during this uh, second phase okay so what is the entry criteria for the test plan the same exit criteria of the previous phase is going to be the entry criteria for the test planning phase that is if the testing team has derived all the testable requirements from the given requirements by the client that is exit criteria of the requirement analysis phase the same thing is the entry criteria to start the test planning also the same the uh, whatever the exit criteria of the previous phase that is the entry criteria of the test planning phase that is testable requirements are derived by the testing team that is the entry criteria so uh, once this is met and uh, once we start test planning so what what are the different activities that the testing team will perform while uh, while uh, performing this uh, while working on this test planning phase while going through the uh, second phase that is test planning phase testing team will create a test plan document okay so test plan and test strategy related documents will be created by the testing team so in uh, in some companies guys okay the test strategy is part of the test plan and uh, in some cases right if the project is very big the test strategy will be separated out of the test plan document okay so most of the cases test plan and test strategy will be together uh, test strategy will be one of the part of the test plan but uh, in some cases uh, where the project size is very big and uh, uh, they need a separate document for the strategy the client may require a separate document for the test strategy in that case test plan will be created separately and test strategy will be created separately by the team okay so so in the test planning phase the testing team will prepare the test plan and test strategy documents okay there that is the activity performed so when when the testing team can exit this test planning phase that is exit criteria what is exit criteria for the test planning phase when this test plan and test strategy documents are reviewed and signed off by the client okay once the testing team has prepared this test plan and test strategy document they will send this okay the testing team will send this particular documents to the client for review the client will go through this test plan and uh, strategy documents review them and uh, if they if they are okay with this uh, created plan and strategy then client will sign off okay approve that or if uh, there are any uh, feedback from the client based on the feedback we have to update the test plan and test strategy and again send it to the client review and once the client reviews and accepts that by signing off then only the this particular test planning phase will be completed okay so the work done by the testing team here that is the creation of the test plan and test strategy should be approved by the client to go to the next phase okay so that is exit criteria of the test planning phase where the client has to sign off this document okay once the client has signed off this test plan and test strategy documents then we'll go to the next phase testing team will go to the next phase that is a test designing phase the entry criteria of the test designing phase is same as exit criteria of the test planning phase okay as you can see here same okay exit criteria of this test planning is nothing but the entry criteria of the test designing phase that is test plan is reviewed and signed off by the client 
what are the different activities that uh, software testers or testing team will perform during the test designing phase in the test designing phase first the software team will create the test scenarios okay test scenarios will be created and after the test scenarios are created these scenarios will be sent to the client for review client has to approve the scenarios once these test scenarios are reviewed and approved by the client for each and every test scenario a multiple set of test cases will be created okay test scenarios are nothing but the high level test cases basically in simple words test scenarios are nothing but the high level test cases so before writing the in detail test cases the software testing team first will create the list of test scenarios which are high level test cases and once this high level test cases are approved by the client that is test scenarios are approved by the client reviewed and approved by the client for each and every uh, written scenario here the testing team has to create multiple test cases for each and every scenario multiple test cases will be created by the testing team and once this uh, test cases in detail test cases document is created this test cases will be again uh, sent to the client for review client has to go through this test cases review and approve them till then they keep on working on the scenarios and test cases okay so in this test designing phase mainly the testing team will create the scenarios and followed by the test cases and uh, get the scenarios and test cases reviewed by the client okay so the exit criteria for the software testing team to exit this test designing phase and go to the next phase is these scenarios and test cases need to be reviewed and approved by the client okay when this scenarios that uh, and test cases that are created by the testing team are reviewed by and approved by the client signed off by the client then only the testing team can move to the next phase that is the next phase we have is the test execution phase in the test execution phase again the entry criteria of the test execution is nothing but the exit criteria of the test designing as usual as you can see here test scenarios and test cases are reviewed and signed off by the client that is the entry criteria to start working on the test execution phase uh, for the software testing team so what are the different activities uh, that software testing will team will perform during the test execution phase there are several activities that the software testing team will perform during the test execution phase they are nothing but first application to be tested is received from the client okay without receiving the application from the without receiving the application that need to be tested by the testing team from the client they can the testing team cannot start testing right so in the test execution phase the application uh, application that need to be tested by the testing team uh, will be received from the client that's the first step okay then what happens next is what happens next is testing team will prepare all the test environments okay for testing this application okay so let's say there is a web application the web application cannot be tested only in chrome browser right we have to test the same application firefox browser opera browser like that every application will have multiple supported environments in which it has to work so in uh, the testing team will prepare all these test environments okay maybe it may be operating system related environments or browser related environments whatever it is based mobile environments or whatever it is based on that based on the application and supported environments uh the testing team has to prepare all the test environments in which uh, they are going to test this application on and and they will make uh, they will prepare this test environments and make them ready for testing okay first application should be there uh, application should be received from the client after the test environment should be ready for testing the application same application on multiple environments for that test environments uh, are prepared and made ready for testing by the testing team as part of the activities third thing will be uh testing team will run the test cases okay what are the test cases that are created in the previous phase that is a test designing phase which are reviewed and approved by the client right that particular test cases are run by the are run by the testing team and um, results will be evaluated okay test cases are executed and uh, some test cases will pass some test cases will fail like that okay and uh, apart from executing the test cases guys uh, the testing team will also perform the exploratory testing okay it is a, like a you know right guided testing here right it is a guided testing but uh, it's like unguided testing where uh, using the heuristics and uh, uh, cognitive thinking process of the testers they will perform the exploratory testing with some plan and all so test cases will be executed on the top of that if there is some more time the exploratory testing will be performed so these two things will be done by the software testing team and while while executing the test cases while performing the exploratory testing okay the so guided and unguided kind of process okay so in both these cases uh, the testing team will come across some defects okay some some functionalities of the application may not be working as per the requirements okay so as per the user needs or requirements if some functionalities of the application are not working in that case the testing team will report the defects okay the deviations uh, from the requirements and deviations from the user needs and expectation those kind of deviations uh, in the functionalities while testing the application will be reported as defects and these defects will be assigned to the developers for fixing developers have to fix this particular defects now let's say the developers have fixed some defects okay so in that case the testing team apart from reporting the defects 
the testing team has also retest the defects okay has to retest the defects that are stated as fixed by developers okay whatever the defects uh, that are stated as fixed by developers the testing team has to perform retesting to cross check whether the defects are really fixed by the developers or not and uh, these are general activities that software testing team will perform during the test execution apart from this there may be other other activities also like there are different types of testing performed during this test execution phase and all which i have not uh, mentioned in this list but uh, at a high level this is a list of the activities that software testing team will generally perform during the test execution phase so to finish up this uh, execution phase wh what is required when can the testing team exit this test execution phase what is the exit criteria of the test execution phase in other words you see software should look stable okay this activities of testing this testing activities in the test execution phase that is executing the test cases exploratory testing reporting the defects okay all these things will be performed in multiple cycles okay it will not happen in a single cycle of uh, testing okay so developers will be giving you multiple versions of the software and uh, in each and every version the testing will be performed execution will be performed it will take a lot of time while uh, the testing cycles will keep on going until the software looks stable okay at some point of time uh, while the developers have fixed most of the defects in the software that are reported by the testers slowly and slowly the software becomes stable and the quality of the software will rise okay the software will reach a state where the, it becomes stable and uh, a kind of situation will come where uh, the software looks very stable that it can be released into the market okay so after a lot of cycles testing cycles this kind of state will come so we have to wait okay the testing team has to wait uh, and continue the test execution phase until the software reaches a stable state and uh, uh, the team feels that it can be released into the market till then testing will be performed as part of the test execution phase and uh, also uh, the testing team uh, has also created a lot of reports for analyzing the state of the uh, software that is ready for releasing into the market okay so how many pending defects are there uh, which functionalities of the application are uh, kind of stable unstable functionalities okay what are the things uh, like what is the quality level of the software that has been tested over a period of time all these things reports will be created by the testing team so once the software looks stable and uh, a team feels that it can be released into the market and also all the reports supporting this uh, stableness of the software are ready that will become the exit criteria of the test execution phase okay that will become the exit criteria for the test execution phase and testing team once it meets this kind of exit criteria will move to the next phase that is test closure phase and the entry criteria for the disclosure phase is same as the exit criteria of the test execution phase as usual software should look stable and the team feels that uh, it can be released into the market and uh, all the reports uh, supporting that stableness of the software and the releasing uh, decision for making the software to be released into the market uh, is created and prepared by the testing team and is ready so that is that is nothing but the entry criteria then what are the different activities that are performed by the testing team during the disclosure phase here all the reports created by the testing team will be analyzed okay in detail analyzed and based on this analysis some summary reports will be created okay quality reports and summary reports will be created where the testing team will provide all the details like how many pending defects are there and all those stuff okay uh, which are which areas of the functionality are stable and etc etc and on the top of that uh, testing team will provide a judgment whether the software can be released into the market or not okay whether software team can uh, software can be released into the market or not the final judgment based on the pending defects and based on the stability of the all the different functionalities on the application the software testing team will create a report here with their judgment and uh, when can the test closure phase will close so this summary report will be shared to the client guys okay and during the test closure phase uh, once the software testing team has prepared this uh, final report having the judgment of the quality and all of the software that report will be shared to the client client has to go through the report and uh, client has to decide whether to stop testing or not okay and also if the client decides to release software into the market and the client decide because this is the ending point the quality of the software looks uh, kind of good and uh, the stable uh, software is kind of stable when the client believes after uh, evaluating the report and checking the software the client feels that uh, this is the right time to stop testing and release software into the market when this happens that will become the exit criteria for the test closure phase then the testing will stop so these are the different or different phases of stlc the testing will start here with the requirement analysis and end with the test closure phase okay so hope guys you got the answer for what is software testing life cycle in this session so that's all for this session the next session i'm going to answer another software testing interview question for you till then see you bye bye